Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, moving away from talking about Omoyele Shoere, we will now be moving into, of course, uh, 774,000 jobs, which finally kicks off today. It was announced yesterday by the Minister of uh, State for Labor and Employment, Festus Kayamo, um, of course, who specified that the President, Muhammad Buhari, gave the go-ahead for it to kick off yesterday. He tweeted, actually, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the takeoff of the Special Public Works Program engaging 774,000 unemployed Nigerians to begin nationwide on the 5th of January 2021. All ND state structures are already in top gear for the takeoff ceremonies. We've uh, invited this morning the head of tax of PwC, Mr. Taiwo Yedili, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Izinwa Wagu, the chairman, Partners for Electoral Reform. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Taiwo Oyedele. Um, you know, and this is, you know, a very basic question for me. Um, I really want to know why. That, that it's, it's the why question. We are doing this in the first place, uh, giving out uh, 700,000 plus jobs for three months to people to earn 20,000 Naira. Um, what, you know, have you over time been able to understand that the government's core reason for doing this? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think the number one reason is the high level of unemployment in Nigeria. Uh, based on the data released by the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, unemployment and underemployment is over 40%. And that's within the context of the fact that the labor force population in Nigeria is over 80 million. So easily, you are looking at over 33 million people who don't have employment or don't have sufficient uh, work to do uh, up to 40 hours in a week. Uh, unfortunately, the demography that is most affected are young people uh, between the ages of 15 and 34 years. So on one hand, government is trying to address this problem of unemployment. On the other hand, I would say it's also political because um, you know if you spread 774,000 employment, 1,000 per local government across the country, you find something for them to do for a few months, you pay them 20,000 per month. The question is, does this solve the unemployment problem uh, or are you just throwing some money to be able to tick some boxes that you are doing something? So I think, you know, the, the guess, your guess is as good as mine, uh, that this, in my view, doesn't solve the unemployment problem. Hmm. All right, we'll, get, we'll get into that. Yes, let me now bring in uh, Ezen Wangwago, Chairman for Partners for Electoral Reform, who's joined us from Abuja. Now, we know this is good news for many Nigerians. Uh, but that's because the program has been postponed so many times. You know, the debates for this started last year and the president just assented this a few days ago. Now, while this is good news, many people are criticizing the government, saying they aim to pay 20,000 naira. And that's not even up to the uh, minimum wage of 30,000 naira. What's your reaction to this? Well, I, I think uh, Oladili made the point about uh, our tendency for uh, tokenism. We we don't uh, like to, we like to scratch the problem. We like to outsource it. Um, the big challenge of unemployment uh, needs to be dealt with by more rigorous uh, thinking. Uh, but whether this government or even another doesn't seem to be interested in industrialization. Um, we, we just take, for instance, at Jukuta, um, that's been more important and um, its capacity to truly give uh, jobs that promote self-esteem. You, you could be having almost um, 17,000 civil engineers, um, all, all, all kind of engineers sucked in by that simple, uh, by that, by, by, by that simple um, turning uh, Ajokuta around, for instance. And the multiplier effect of having the other ruling mills, the, the Joss, the Casina, the Oshobo, um, we're not going to invest in that. We're going to do that which excites. Um, and 
the excitement is that it's not even those that are unemployed that will get this 20,000. Um, majority of those who will be um, gifted this 20,000 will be people who are already in some form of employment, who are cronies. Uh, we've seen this, we've seen poverty alleviation program of um, uh, the, the, the other political parties when they were there, they gifted them to their party members. And the, the, the big issue will be, even in all of that, are we addressing the big question of unemployment in a way that is sustainable, in a way that puts real jobs in the hands of our people? Where are the textile industries? What has happened to the charadas, the liquid juice? Where are they? What, what are we doing about making sure that we revitalize? Uh, so this, this Richard card um, economy that we are running is not going to help us in the long run. It's simply going to be uh, tokenistic for me. Hmm. All right. You know, yeah. you, you mentioned something now, and uh, we, we do need to get a government representative in one of our subsequent bulletins to address this. But in, in the course of my research online, I found that people complained and alleged that these the recipients of this 20,000 Naira for the Special Works Program were members of the same party, of the ruling party. I don't know how true that, that is, yeah. but we'll have to get in a government rep to, to weigh in on this and really answer questions as to the facts of this case. But a major concern of, of people about this is that it's scheduled to run for just three months. I mean, just three months. If the government say they intend to lift 100 million people out of poverty, they are giving this money to tackle unemployment, uh, to cushion the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, and so many other reasons they've given, do you think 20,000 naira for three months is the long-term solution to this? I mean, after three months, what next? Are they expected to now go back to the streets? Are we starting again from the scratch? What do you have to say about the government building sustainable initiatives for empowerment? Well, I, I, I've made the point, I, I'm sorry, I've made the point that there is no, um, you are going to excite people. Um, I know 20,000 is a lot. Uh, I know it can it can drive um, uh, a bean cake manufacturing process. I know you can fry at what we call a kara in the morning, and then by ten o'clock you are out. If you sustain that, you can make something out of it. I know you can you can start a car wash uh, if you find space to start a car wash thing. But like I told you, the 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 the, the real thing is that when you politicize even this tokenistic. Um, engagements. You don't get the, the kind of out, outcomes that, that is desired. And it's not a pretense. It's we, you know the reason why um, sometimes we, we, we like textbooking. We like textbooking. These are things we've seen before. We are not just coming this road before. Nobody is inventing any way. And in, 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 in the way we do our things, we simply use it for patronage and, and satisfying uh, our cronies. So if, if we can depart from that, 20,000 can in, in, in seven, 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 for, um, for 7, um, 774,000 people can make some impact. But for me, I am more now interested in asking why any serious country that wants to leapfrog out of poverty will take industrialization much more seriously. You then must deal with your, the issue of power so that even if these people have... Uh, after this, there are public works, which may mean clearing uh, the bushes and all of those things and patching up roads and all that. They can then begin to think in terms of putting resources in a, in a sustainable manner. And, and that, for me, is what is important. And that's not the thinking for, for government. That's not the thinking for citizens who have responsibility to oversight government. And say, hey, we've seen you do this before. We've we've gone through this part before. But what you're going to have is a scramble. We're going to all be scrambling for that that token. And and for us, it's is a gift. It's not it's not something that we see as something that we're going to use to drive the challenge that 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 faces us. And for me, so it's not a sustainable. It's not sustainable. We know it's not sustainable. But for what it is. Um, maybe it's part of the social security intervention of governments to to you know gift people um, money in in some ways. Some can call it palliative. Some can call it um, um, intervention. But interventions don't solve problems. What will solve problem will be real planning to industrialize the country in a way that creates real jobs for 
for for citizens. All right, I'm going to go back to bring in uh, Mr. Oyedele here uh, to uh, speak with us. I, uh, some people would argue that this is not very different from the, of course, the end power. Uh, scheme, and you know, and you know, maybe also the, the trade up money. There's many other schemes that the government has tried uh, to use to empower young people across the country. Um, but of course, uh, Fester Skayamo, the minister, uh, seems very excited about this. Uh, do you think that there might be angles to this that the government um, sees that the rest of the Nigerian public may not, you know, be excited about? Are there things that they may have also? Uh, interpreted this as, you know, that would be greatly beneficial to the Nigerian youth, all 700,000 of them, uh, that, you know, maybe a lot of people are missing out on. Yeah, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, if you are one of the 774,000 people, uh, it doesn't matter what analysis anybody is doing on TV or radio or social media, you know, it would be good for you to earn 60,000 era in three months uh, that you otherwise would have been able to earn. Um, so for those people, it's good and it's commendable, uh, maybe also for their immediate family. But the reality is, is, I don't think is that anybody is against government trying to create employment. The issues are one around how do you select and identify the beneficiaries of this scheme? Um, and the other one is around sustainability, which uh, my uh, you know, friend has talked about, is after three months, then what? And do you have the structure in place for these 60,000 over three months to even be applied productively? Or is it just cash transfer to people so they can just have some money to spend and so government can have a box to tick that they are trying to address unemployment problem. I think these are some of the issues. We also have the tendency in Nigeria uh, to go into this farm fair. Uh, so you may find that for this scheme, the takeoff itself and the structure to implement it might even be more expensive than the money you're paying to these individuals over that period of time. So fundamentally, we have to be clear about what problem do we have that is unemployment and poverty. What solutions can we profile, particularly that will scale? Uh, so you don't want to do a drop in the ocean. Based on the data from the MBS, you have over 33 million people who are either unemployed or underemployed. 774,000 is barely 2% of that population. So which means the vast majority of our people are not going to benefit from this. So if you're going to lift 100 million people out of poverty, the 20,000 naira per month is even not enough. It's below poverty so threshold. It, it's it, not up it, to $1.90 a day. Mr. So which means we have to do something differently. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I wanted to you know, ask, is it possible that the government feels that this you know, funds may trickle down eventually and be beneficial to even more people. Um, you know, when you pay a person 20,000 naira for three months, um, you know, of course they would buy things, they will patronize other businesses. Um, it gives them more money to also, maybe also set up their own little, little business here and there. So that the government maybe also see that, you know, it might trickle down into other um, 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 ways, you know, to assist the economy and assist other people. Could that be their understanding? And also quickly, um, you know, right after that, I would like um, Mr. Uh, Wango to speak on the selection process and how you think it can be best done. Well, Mr. Edili, first of all, let, let's hear from you. Yeah, you're right. You know, in a way, uh, if you pay money to poor people, so which is why the issue of selection process is important. If you pay money to poor people, they tend to spend it because they they have needs that are unmet. And when they spend, it will help businesses that they are patronizing. So you create some economic activities. But the issue is still around sustainability. But beyond that, the point I'm trying to make is the biggest impact that government will make in terms of creating employment will not come from the money they are spending directly. It will come from policy interventions. How do you ensure, for example, that over 30 million MSMEs have the right operating environment that, that would enable, one, just imagine each MSME in Nigeria employing one more person. 
So that'll be 30 million jobs. But we need to create the environment, regulatory hurdles and impediments and government coming in the way of people trying to just make a living is the biggest problem that we see every time, including multiple taxation. You need to address those issues. For the amount of money you are spending for this scheme, you need to ask yourself in terms of cost-benefit analysis, are we implementing this scheme in a way that we get more value for every Naira that we spend? Those, for me, are the important issues. All right. And, uh, quickly to uh, Mr. Eisenwanwagu, um, the selection process, um, how do you think it can be best done? You know, and how else can we really spend 49 billion Naira? I think that's, that's the figure. More than 40 billion Naira that would be expended on this uh, program. Uh, in delving into the selection process, I, I do know that um, first, um, if you if you drive a merit based uh, selection process, then it you may have difficulty getting seven hundred and seventy four thousand people. So um, merit based would be uh, truly determining that the people are indigent, that they do not have any form of uh, employment. Um, I, I've seen people who run very uh, lucrative shops uh, still tell you that they are unemployed in Nigeria and they, if there's an advertisement, they, they are in the forefront of it. So I, I'm, I'm, I would be more interested in one, transparency in, in terms of uh, that process, advertise it in a way that people can touch and know uh, both the, the those who are driving it and, and, and the beneficiaries. I, 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 I'm, uh, the opacity in the way we 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 drive our processes is still something that um, I'm I'm worried about. So, but uh, having said that, I keep and I would continue to maintain that. For me, we have had different giftings from from government. Uh, remember, we had a dodge. If 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 you could, if gifting people money could could turn things around, then. Nigeria will not be where we are. We, we had a dodgy where we paid bumper salaries. What people did was that they bought cars, they, they, they married new wives um, and all that, things that they couldn't, couldn't sustain wealth. So the thinking around policies must be one that thinks sustainability, that thinks what promotes the, the, the general good or what we call public good. Right. And I am thinking that it is not rocket science to revitalize um, the textile industry. These are big employment, you know, uh, drag nets. If you, if, you, if, you, if you open up your textile industry, if you revitalize Ajokuta, if you, if you, if you make power sustainable, I mean, uh, power, if, uh, if you put out power in the way that it, it, it can be used by uh, the SMCs that he talked about, yes. you will be able to get out of it. Poverty Indeed. and unemployment. Indeed, track. Mr. Wazo, sadly, we are out of time. I apologize. We do hope to continue this conversation in a later interview. Chairman, Partners for Electoral Reform Abuja, I thank you for being here, as well as Taiwo Oyedele, head of tax of PwC Lagos. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All, All right, right. Osaragi, look at this issue quickly. I mean, it's it's. It's a very controversial one, seeing as uh, you know, some people would argue that there's the waste, Lagos State Waste Management Authority, that's LOMA, to clean the gutters and, you know, the drainage and all of that, that why would you uh, hire unemployed you to do all that and give them 20,000 naira to cushion the effects of the pandemic? And they, they uh, you know, they contrapose this, or they just oppose this, I beg your pardon, with the US and other de developed countries that are giving their residents, you know, money to... Uh, for the pandemic, yeah. to cushion the effects of the pandemic, and then asking them to clean the gutters in return. I don't know, I don't know what you think about that, but that's just the facts yeah. as it stands. You know? we, we, of course, we'll look out for more time to you know, expand these discussions. You know? But I, I would just end by saying, if this had started when it should have started, you know, before the delay, before the controversy with the National Assembly, yes. it would be done by now. We're still in a lockdown those people would be back to where they were before. And so it really wouldn't have any effect. It wouldn't do any. It's a drop mm. in the ocean, like he said. Mm. If it started a couple of months ago, it will be over by now.
those same people would still be unemployed in Nigeria today and nothing would have changed. Yes, yeah, so, so better for that huge amount of money to be invested into something, something that would pay off in the Absolutely. long run. All right, that's all we have uh, for now. We're going to be back in a bit to talk about Pastor Enoch Adeboye and his comments with regards to the COVID-19 vaccine in Nigeria. Stay with us this morning on The Breakfast.